until he's like taken out of the power line. Even though the bilge is completely dry, bone dry, there hasn't been water in the bilge now for weeks. The keel is still not drying. Before we really get into this video, be sure to hit that subscribe button so that you can see more videos like this one. The fiberglass has all been penetrated quite deeply with water and so it could take like potentially a year or more to completely dry out. We try an experiment. We dry the surface with the hair dryer and then we put the epoxy fiberglass mixture into the area and then tape it all up hoping that it will bond while it's still dry before it all gets wet again. There's Round one, we'll see if this will dry up. If you think about existence in order and chaos, right? So they both have positives and they have negatives. The order provides security. The chaos provides growth. Yeah, yeah some of it didn't quite take, but grind this back and see. Ready for work. Still coming through here. It's so all that when we went to epoxy, even though the outside was dry, water came through before the epoxy bonded and then basically popped the whole thing off. We come up with a new plan. We've got a fast setting epoxy. The thought is to dry the surface with the hair dryer, get the epoxy so it's just about to go off, so it's just about to kick, and put it on right as it's starting to cure, and it'll cure fast enough and hard enough that it'll create a bonded surface that then is holding in the water. The change is like instantaneous, and so first attempt at this was also another epic fail. But what are you gonna do? Try again, so that's what we did. The second round I ended up putting on way too early, so then I had to babysit it the whole time um, and make sure that it was curing and that water wasn't coming through. But it seems like it's actually kind of working. Now it's just wait, let it bond, see if it bonds correctly. In order to have real strength, you have to have both hardness and flexibility. Hardness and structure is brittle it can collapse, but you have to have it, otherwise you end up with something without form. First layer of actual, well, I guess we put some glass in, but then we had to like backtrack a bit, so going again for round two or three or day 79. <laughs> Humans, what sets us apart from many of the things on the planet is that we have the ability to adapt. That's what humans have. We have that unlimited potential to adapt and overcome anything that stands before us. Now it's just day after day of adding more fiberglass round after round until we build it out. And actually somebody commented that my fiberglass work looked really good, which I'm quite happy about because, well now I've done hours and hours upon hours and hours of fiberglass work and I've actually gotten pretty decent at it. Seems to have adhered really nicely. I don't see any problems with it. Oh, that's great news. <laughs> Felt like we we're finally making progress in getting to a point to where we were gonna be going back in the water. We are capable of basically anything. It's just whether or not we are able to figure it out. The only reason things are impossible is because nobody's done it yet. Relandable rockets, reusable rockets, space travel, all of that stuff was thought to be impossible. But now humans have done it, so it's possible. Our limitations are almost always mental. I mean, we have physical limitations for sure, but most of the time it's, it's some sort of mental blockage that is keeping us from achieving whatever it is we want to achieve. The way that we get past those mental blockages is by going into the unknown, by exploring the unknown and figuring out what is there. There's a difference between going into the unknown willingly 
and being forced into it. Going into it willingly can be very painful, but being forced into it is more painful than going into it willingly. That's what happened with this haul out multiple different times is we're forced outside of our comfort zone. And so then we have to deal with that. Now that we've been in the marina so long, we are actually part of this marina community. There's a bunch of sailors here from all over the world that are stuck in Tunisia and it was Cassie's birthday. And so we got to partake in that party, which was fantastic. After that party, we went back to the boat and had a party of our own, which was washing the boat, which we couldn't do for months because we were afraid that if we got water on the boat, we would end up with keel even more wet. So Ariane Rod has just been gathering dirt and dust because it rains dirt here. Probably the dirtiest the boat has been since I've had her and it felt amazing to clean it up. The, the path to higher order is always through chaos. Growth happens from the oscillation from order to chaos. And so you have to figure out in your own life how much of that can you tolerate personally. So we might have a clog somewhere. And so I checked the head and the water pressure in the head is fine. So we know that the clog is not before the pump. It's somewhere after the pump. And so from that we troubleshoot and I find that it's actually in the faucet itself. And so that's why we need to take that apart. And so Jackson climbs underneath the sink and undoes the faucet. I've been down there before. Now that we have running water and there's no leak into the bilge from the water tank, it's time to seal the water tank up and start feeling as if we're actually living like civilized people. I'm gonna test to see how well the Anti-fouling sticks to that. You have to figure out how to walk the Tao. That's walking the line between order and chaos. Ideally, going into both aspects consciously and aware rather than being thrown into it. But because existence is greater than any one of us, you get thrown back and forth and so you have to deal with that and navigate that. And it's a bit of like life judo or life jujitsu. Okay, existence just threw a big curveball of chaos at me. How do I like use that chaotic momentum, reroute it so that it works in my favor? It's the art of living. Time to do the anti-fouling. The long-awaited anti-fouling. That means tomorrow. We're going in the water. Right. SpaceX Dragon, we're go for launch. Let's light this candle. Ten, nine. Eight, seven, six, five, four, three, two, one, zero. Ignition. Lift off of the Falcon 9 and Crew Dragon. <laughs> go NASA. Go SpaceX. Godspeed. Bottom dog. America has launched. And so rises a new era of American space flight. And with it, the ambitions of a new generation continuing the dream. 20 seconds into flight, stage one propulsion is nominal. T plus 30 seconds into this historic mission. Flying crew on board Dragon and Falcon 9 and look at them go. Falcon power to tree nominal. M1D throttle down. We're throttling down to get ready for the period of maximum dynamic pressure. 
We're in the throttle bucket. Reports say all systems are go. Vehicle is supersonic. We've exceeded Mach 1 on the Falcon 9. M1D throttle up. We're throttling back up to full power as we're through one Max Q. Copy, one Bravo. And we heard that one Bravo call out. That's just the second aboard zone that they're in. They'll continue to be on this until the first age has done its job and they switch over to the second. At this point, Bob and Doug pulling about 2.3 Gs, 2.3 times the Earth's gravity, already moving at over 1,500 miles per hour. Next major event coming up is going to be the triple. We'll have main engine cutoff of the nine first stage engines, stage separation, and then ignition of the second stage engine to continue to carry astronauts into orbit. Coming up in about 20 seconds. M1D throttle down. You heard we're throttling down the Merlin engines on the first stage. And we have Miko. Miko. Falcon stage separation confirmed. Falcon two alpha. And back ignition. All right, we have stage separation confirmed. The first stage beginning its flight back. The second stage being powered by that single Merlin 1D vacuum engine has ignited and is now carrying off. Bob and Doug into orbit. Dragon Tappy, nominal trajectory. Bob, Doug, on behalf of the entire launch team, thanks for flying the Falcon 9 today. We hope you enjoyed the ride and wish you a great mission. Thanks for the great uh, ride to space. Copy, good luck, Godspeed. 